start with uh, saying our confession together. Let's say this all together. This is my Bible, the inspired and living Word of God, given to all men for all ages. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have, and I can do what it says I can do. As I'm taught the Word of God, I boldly declare that I have eyes to see, I have ears to hear, and my heart is open and receptive to the truth of God's Word. And I'll not only be a hearer, but I'll be a doer. I'll be a doer. I'll be a doer of the Word of God as I do. I know I will be blessed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, welcome. Uh, I'm trying to remember last time that we had the very first Sunday service on the first. I don't recall any recently. So it's exciting to be here with you all, even though... I know a lot of people are out traveling or whatever. Uh, welcome to the first Sunday service of 2023. What a better way to begin our year than worshiping God and, and getting filled with the Word of God so we can go out and be even more victorious. Amen? Now, if we look back, uh, by the way, uh, while I'm thinking about it, next week I'm going to bring uh, some of the... Uh, Notable achievements that we have seen as a church this last year. One of them, I'll, I'll just give you a, a brief, uh, oh, I'll just tell you. You know, we, I've told you from the beginning we've been a tithing church. Uh, we give to other churches, other ministries. To date, uh, was about, since we started, we have given as a little church. Now look around you, because this is going to put this in perspective. We have given as a church 460 thousand dollars <laughs> and touched people's lives that's a, I mean you know some churches do that in one service but not but God is God is faithful for what we've had here so that just is a, a testament to God's faithfulness in your life to your giving your faithfulness amen, amen. and as difficult and as trying as 2022 was for most of us or for many of us I should say I sense that Coming in 2023, we're going to have even more challenges, okay? Uh, you know, because the end is drawing near. How many know that, you know, return of Christ every day becomes more and more imminent. Every day that you wake up, you're one day closer to the return of Christ, amen? So we have to understand that as saints of God, the enemy can't take you to hell because you're born again. Despite his best efforts... And he can't get you out of faith. Help me, Lord, here. <clears throat> he can't take you to hell, okay? So what he'd like to do is he'd like to just take you out so that you can't witness about the love of God to other people. How many know what I'm talking about? But I'm telling you, here's the truth. If you'll just keep the faith. I said, if you'll just keep the faith, Satan can't do either of those things to you. And we've seen it this last year, God's faithfulness through, the, through pandemic and through lockdowns and through cancel culture and, and, and wokeism and all the junk that you know, we continue to see in our society. God is faithful. You are faithful. And if you'll just keep the faith, those things are You're going to continue to be blessed. You're going to continue to be protected. You're going to be, continue to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And you're just going to go up and up and up and up and up, even though the world is going down and down and down and down. Amen? So I felt it was appropriate this morning as I prayed about what I should speak on. Uh, I want to speak to you concerning your faith as we move into the new year. So what we first thing that we have to remind ourselves is <clears throat> we must be in total agreement with what God says. How many would, would agree with that statement? And this thing we call the Bible 
It has to become the final authority in your life. You know, it's not what I think. It's not what you think, Fox News thinks, the government thinks, whatever it is. What does the word say? And so we have to base what we believe and what we think based on this word, not our experience, not on our education, not, a, you know, with uh, four or five letters after your name for, from all your, you know, you, you got smarter than, you know, you even know, whatever. We have to keep the faith. Amen? And we have to keep God in the forefront, in our minds and in our hearts. So turn with me this morning. Scripture I'm sure you're all familiar with. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll put it up on the screen for you. This is one that most of us are very familiar with throughout the years. If you've been in church at all, hallelujah. Praise God. Young man, it's good to see you here. I forgot your name. Matt, it's nice to have you here. God, I pray God will just bless you today. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 4, 7 in the King James says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And, of course, we know this was Paul speaking as he was ending, uh, getting close to ending his time on the earth. Look at it for a moment in the contemporary English version. It says, I have fought well, I have finished the race, and I have been faithful. Say that with me. I have been faithful. Say it again. I have been faithful. Say it with me. I have fought well. I am finishing my race. I am being faithful. Hallelujah. And I bring this to your mind and, and heart once again because I believe with all that's in me that this needs to be at the forefront of all that we do in 2023. And I'll, I'll, I'll share more in a minute here. Timothy was a young pastor. And he was experiencing, get this, persecution. Can you imagine? As, a, as the pastor of a New Testament church, he was facing persecution on every side. And throughout the chapter, Paul is trying to encourage him to walk in this calling. And a lot of people say, well, I'm not a pastor. It doesn't matter. This chapter is for all of us, whether you're a pastor or not. Amen? Because you have to understand, if you're going to stand up for what's right, if you're going to stand up for what God says in this book, Guess what? You will face persecution at some point, in some form or fashion. So Paul is encouraging Timothy, continue to walk in your calling despite all this persecution. Amen? He even tells him in chapter 3, he says, All who choose to live godly as worshipers of Jesus, the anointed one, will also experience persecution. How many can say, already you've experienced persecution? Well, I certainly can. That's you and me, and if you haven't figured it out yet, or if you haven't noticed, it, it's coming. But you could sum this whole Second Timothy up in, in, in three words, and I'm gonna, this, this is my, my summary of, of Second Timothy. I would use these three words, keep the faith. Keep the faith, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Hallelujah. You know, I think many believers forget the fact that, you know, faith is just, it's not just what you've done year to date. Faith is, is, is to be a lifetime, a life experience. Turn to Romans, or we'll just put it up on the screen for you. Romans 1.17. He says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live how? The just shall live how? You would have... Excuse me, you and I shall live how? By faith. See, God only accepts people in faith. Amen? Paul tells us in 2 Timothy that we're, he tells him, preach the word in season and out. Well, what does that mean? That, uh, that means for you and I, when it's convenient, you need to preach the word to people. When it's inconvenient, you need to preach the word to people. Amen? He also tells them to reprove people, to rebuke people. Exhort people with patience and with what? Good doctrine. Good doctrine. Well, how do you make sure your doctrine is good? Is that a good question? Well, one of the best ways you can do it is by being in church on a regular basis 
and by fellowshipping with other believers. Amen? And also by being in the Word on a daily basis. You know, January, January 1st is always a great time to find yourself a reading plan, read through the Bible in a year, or read through the New Testament in a year, or whatever, but do something to help you get a habit of getting into the Word on a daily basis, because that's the only way that you're going to be able to share good doctrine with people that need to hear it. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, he even tells us that there's many people are going to leave sound doctrine, and they're going to love lies and fables more than they love the truth. Does anything, anybody think that we might be living in those days? Oh, my word, I'm telling you. I saw this uh, little video that someone did. I, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. But he, this gentleman was out, out in the marketplace. He was out. It was a real sunny. It might have been California. He went to a gas station. He was waiting for people to drive up to fill up their tanks. And he would come up to him, and he's, he's, he's you know, videoing this as he, as he does it. And he'd come up to him, hey, uh, so-and-so, hey, I would love to fill your tank with gas. At my expense, if you can share one Bible scripture with me. You know, in the whole video that I saw, not one person could do it. Person after person after person after person after person turned him down for a complete... And gas is pretty expensive in California. I mean, it's expensive here too, but even in California, it's even worse. I'll fill up your gas tank for free if you can quote to me one scripture from the Bible. One lady got real. She said, well, for God so loved the world. That's all she could, but she couldn't finish it. So that tells you the kind of society that you and I are living in. Amen? I mean, where do you think that these, this woke, cancel culture, gender dysphoria ideas come from in the first place? They come from the pit of hell. Amen? So more than ever, we cannot let this kind of thing detour or discourage us. We need to stick to the truth even more than we ever have to this point in our lives. Amen? And I can guarantee you this morning that you have people in your life and in your sphere of influence that need to hear the truth. Amen? Hallelujah. So what does Paul tell Timothy? He says, he tells him to watch, to endure, and to continue to do the work of evangelists. That's what, that's what our focus needs to be for this new year, 2023. And we say yes to this because why? We serve a righteous judge. And because we serve a righteous judge, if you'll do what he tells you to do, guess what? There is coming a reward for that. Hallelujah. Wow, what a sweet day that's going to be. Amen. Anybody looking forward to that? Oh, see, I'm talking about rewards here on the earth while you're still alive, but also in the time to come when you get to heaven with the Lord. I mean, I don't think any of us can even imagine what that's going to be like at this point. But I can assure you, they will be awesome. And they will be over and above all that you could think and imagine. Come on, somebody. So when you make a quality decision. Did you hear that phrase? Who makes it? You do. When you make a quality decision to keep the faith, no matter what comes your way, not only will your faith produce what you're believing God for, but it'll also lead you into everything that you need and you want and you desire in God. Hallelujah. I said faith. We'll do that. So notice this statement, please. If you keep the faith, all is yours in God. Let me say that again. If you will keep the faith, all is yours in God. Pastor Chris, what do you mean by that? Well, let me explain. That little word, if, is a very important part of that phrase. It's vital. So if you break that down, you're going to see that the if part if you'll do your part, guess what? The faith will do its part. Amen? Jesse DePlanis says it like this. He says, faith is not the work of a moment, but faith is the work of a lifetime. 
Faith is the work of a lifetime. So the challenge becomes for all of us, including myself, we have to surrender ourselves to God instead of surrendering ourselves to ourselves, to our wants, our desires, our needs. But you'll notice one thing, and the reason that I made that statement just a few minutes ago is you'll notice that when God created the earth, he gave it all to mankind. Is there anything that God withheld from Adam and Eve? Hallelujah. Not one thing. He gave all of it to them. And of course, Satan, he, he did not like that. And so what did he do? He enticed Adam and Eve to sin. The moment they sinned is the moment they lost everything. Hallelujah. The reason they lost everything is they did not keep the faith. And of course, that brings us where we are today. Adam and Eve had it all, and they let it all go. Hallelujah. But now you can see, because of Jesus, if you will keep the faith, everything is yours. Everything. Jesus came to save us, to restore us, to make us righteous before God's eyes again, but it's still up to us to keep the faith. Amen? And Satan hasn't changed over all these millennia. He's still trying to do the same things he did with Adam and Eve. Let's look at it for a minute. 1 Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and the King James says, Be sober. Be vigilant, vigilant, I'll get it right yet, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Hallelujah. The contemporary English version says, be on your guard, stay awake, your enemy the devil is like a roaring lion. He didn't say he is a roaring lion, right? He says he's like a roaring lion. Hallelujah. Sneaking around to find someone to attack. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked at this scripture with these eyes, but I have. This encourages me greatly because it tells me that Satan just cannot attack anyone that he wants to. He has to find someone who's left the door open. And the person that's left the door open is the one who set their, their faith aside that lose their faith. Let me read it to you out of the Passion Translation. He says, Be well balanced and always alert, because your enemy the devil roams around incessantly, like a, ro a roaring lion, looking for its prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of trouble you endure. I'll stop right there just a second. One of the great tricks of the enemy is to try and convince you that no one has ever gone through what you're going through. And so that you can have this little pity party, poor me, why me, you know, the Eeyore syndrome, poor me, why me. No, whatever you're experiencing, Everyone in the earth has already experienced it probably many, many, many times over. But he says in verse 10, he says, And after your brief suffering, brief, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So encourage yourself with that, folks. When, it, when you keep the faith, it means everything the blood of Jesus bought and paid for is yours. Everything in the word that God promises to you is yours. Amen. That's why I said everything on this earth is yours if you keep the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look again at the Bible definition of faith, Hebrews 11. You're all familiar with it. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 1. I absolutely just love the Amplified Classic 
version, the way it translates, it says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Anybody ever bought property? Paid off a car, a vehicle of some sort? What do you get after you pay it off? What does that mean? What's that title deed tell you? That you own it, that it is yours. God's saying, your faith is the title deed of the things that you're hoping for. It's the proof of the things that you do not see and the conviction of the reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to your senses. What you can't see, feel, taste, touch. Hallelujah. But it's still real. Amen? Hallelujah. How does it start, though? Now faith. I'm going to challenge you a bit here. I'm going to challenge myself as well this morning. We tend to put our faith in a future event of some sort. Am I correct? Yeah. And there, we say, you know, I'm believing God for this. I'm believing God for that. But it's always most likely in a future time or a future event that we're believing God for. Another way to say it is we rest our faith on what is going to be. Okay, and I understand that. But here's the thing I want to challenge you with this morning. If we want to see things change quickly, anybody like to see things change quickly? Why not stay with the phrase, now faith? Hallelujah. Remind yourself that everything is yours. Take ownership of your faith and keep it in the now. See, your faith makes a demand on the Word of God. And your faith is what does the work. But you have to keep your eyes on the Lord, not on the circumstances. The Bible tells us we go from faith to what? Faith. But we could say it like this. This is my own interpretation now. We go from now to now. We go from now to now. What does that mean? That matter, no matter what happens, you need to keep the faith. You, have to need, you need to be always spirit-led. Stay loyal to God. Stay loyal to the vision that he's placed in your heart. And to do that, it means that you cannot adapt yourself to the circumstances that you find yourself in. Amen? And let's just be real here this morning. Almost everything that is happening in this crazy, mixed-up world is wanting you to change and to adapt to the circumstances you see. Am I, am I speaking to anybody here this morning? Here's something I personally have had to really work on myself this last year, especially the last six months, is that you cannot regulate your enthusiasm according to your surroundings and your circumstances and the latest report you read on the Internet. Because if you do... You will get so frustrated, so mad, so angry. You just want to spit nails. But what does it do? It gets you out of your faith. But if you will continue to listen to God, He's going to guide you in what to do. He's going to guide you in what to say. He's going to guide you in where to go. And He's going to guide you in how to do it. If you'll remember in the book of John, Jesus said this, he says, I only do, or let me back up, he says, I only say what I hear the Father say, and I only do what I see the Father do. I'm telling you, that is revelation. If you'll take that to yourself, if you've never heard that before, when you read through the New Testament, when you see a statement from Jesus, he's not just thinking of something saved on his own, out of his emotion, out of his intellect. He's saying exactly what he's already heard the Father say. Or when he does something, he's already doing what he saw the Father do. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus himself said, My sheep hear my voice, and what? And another one, they will not follow. You can hear his voice, no matter who you are. No matter how long you've been saved, you can hear the voice of the Spirit. Amen? And then what do you do once you hear the voice? You have to be faithful to do 
what he tells you to do or faithful to say what he tells you to say. Amen? John 16, 13. We'll put it up on the screen. It says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. Who said this? Jesus himself said this. Look at it in the Amplified Classic. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes. Remember uh, when Jesus was testifying before Pontius Pilate? Uh, no, it was, uh, I think it was Herod. I'm sorry. He said, he testified and, and he says, you almost make me to believe, or no, he's talking to Paul, but he's, he says, what is truth? In other words, he's saying, well, you know, you believe this, but I believe that. Well, people say, well, that's, that's truth to you, but it's not truth to me. No, your truth is not based on what you think or, or feel based on your intellect or your experience. Truth is truth. Truth is the highest form of reality. And that truth only comes from one point, one place, one source, and that's God himself. So he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes. He will guide you into all truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth will help you God. I was thinking of, you know, when you get up, you know, TV shows. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give that message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare it to you the things that are to come and that will happen in the future. If you want to get an insight into the future, just start being more attentive to the voice of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Folks, this is one reason why praying in the Spirit is so very powerful. Because you're not praying your own words. You're not praying your own intellect. You're not praying your own understanding. You are praying exactly what the Spirit has heard directly from the Father. And the Spirit is giving those words to you. And you're speaking them out in another language. That's why spirit-led prayer, spirit-led prayers of any kind, praying in the spirit is so very powerful. He says, when you pray in the spirit, you do not pray unto men, you pray unto God. And he also says in 2 Corinthians, he says, when you pray in the spirit, you're praying out mysteries. How many like mysteries? Well, what, what does that mean, Pastor Chris? Well, let me ask you this way. Is anything in your past a mystery to you? No, you know everything that's happened in your, in your life, don't you? How about what's happening to your, in your life right now? Is that a mystery? It's not a trick question, guys. Come on. You, you. No, you know exactly what's happening. What is a mystery to you is what's going to happen in your future. Is that right? So if you're praying mysteries to God, that means you are praying out your future when you pray in the Holy Ghost. And those words that you're praying are coming directly from the Father by the Spirit to you so that you can pray them out so God can lead you to the place that He has for you in the future. How powerful. So powerful. No wonder the enemy fights this tooth and nail. Hallelujah. That's all I'm going to say about it right now. But when you make that decision to keep the faith, it is going to secure your life spiritually. It's going to secure your life physically. It's going to secure your life financially, mentally, emotionally, every other way, because that is what surrendering God is all about. It's having faith in your life as a believer. Amen? Our entire life on this planet is called to, to be a life lived in faith. Hallelujah. It's about being obedient to God in all the things and holding on to the vision that he gives to you. Hallelujah. Philippians 1.21. We'll put it up on the screen. A lot of times you see this preached at you know, funerals and homecoming services. 
but this is uh, good for us today as well. He says, this is Paul saying, for me to live is Christ, his life in me, and to die is gain, the gain of glory, the glory of eternity. See, as we enter into 2023, do not be deterred from whatever tries to come your way and derail your faith. And you know it's coming. You know there's something coming that's going to try and get you discouraged, trying to get you down, try and remove you from the vision, the path, the path and the purpose that God has for you. But you need to stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen? No matter what comes, his word says he will never leave you, never forsake you. His word says he sticks closer than a brother. When all people around you have abandoned you, God is still there. Amen? And because he's still there, that means everything is yours. Hallelujah. That's exciting. If you'll simply keep the faith in 2023, at some point your faith will manifest in the natural. Amen? Hallelujah. So I want to close today with just a real short prophetic word that came from Rick Renner. It's about two minutes. We're going to play this, and then I'm going to close. Go ahead and uh, play that uh, video, if you would, please. Make sure we got good sound. Not long ago, I was on a plane praying for you. And I was getting ready to write letters to my friends and to my partners. And suddenly, I heard the word of the Lord. And the Lord said, the year 2023 will be filled with divine surprises, divine provision, and divine revelation for those who will receive it. I opened my computer to write it down. I said, now, Lord, make, make sure I really understood this. And I heard it again. The year 2023 will be filled with divine surprises, divine provision, and divine revelation for those who will receive it. Notice the Lord said, for those who will receive it. you got to take it by faith. God offers us everything. But you've got to take everything by faith. God offers you healing. But if you don't use your faith to take it, you won't be healed. And now the Lord says, if you'll take it right now, if you'll receive it, the year 2023 will be filled with wonderful divine surprises. It will be filled with wonderful divine provision. And it will be filled with wonderful divine revelation for those who will receive it. I speak this word to you in the name of Jesus. And my friend, I want you to reach out by faith to receive it. Receive it right now. This is the word of the Lord for us for the year 2023. Hallelujah. Stretch your hand out. Say, Pastor Chris, I receive divine surprises, divine supply, and divine revelation in 2023. I receive it. I take it to myself. It's mine. And I thank you, Lord. By faith, I have it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's all it takes. You will be able to look back this time next year and say, wow. We had a lot of things come against us. But guess what? God delivered us out of a few. God, God delivered us out of them all. Amen? Say it all. All. And my now faith took me even closer to God's plan. My now faith took me even closer to the divine purpose that God has for me on this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as a result, in 2023, I will see divine surprises, divine supply, and divine revelation. And I receive that. I'm, talk, I'm speaking for my... I receive that. Say that with me. I receive it in Jesus' name. Now lift your hand and just thank Him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that our faith is now. We will go from now to now and faith to faith. 
Thank you for those divine surprises. Thank you for divine supply. Thank you for divine revelation in Jesus' name. Lord, you know exactly what we're going to need. You know exactly what we're about to face. And you've already made a way for us, and it will not touch us. You've even said in your word that a thousand shall fall at our side, ten thousand shall fall at the other side, but it shall not come nigh our dwellings for those who receive it. So, Lord, we just simply receive it, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I've got the victory living inside of me. I got the grace.